everyone, so my name is Matthew McCack from Room 51 and this is Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower where I teach you how to teach a board game and in this video I'll be covering Welcome To. Now this is a how to teach video meaning I am assuming you already know how to play this game and now you're just looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games, this is just a way that has worked for me and could possibly help you out if you have any sort of difficulties teaching games or this game in particular. Now I'm going to be teaching this or I'm going to be showing how I teach this to a group of people who are not gamers because I hear a lot about how like oh we could use Welcome To as like almost like a, a gateway game um, to like rolling rights or just board gaming in general. I feel like there's a little bit of a lot going on here but I have discovered a way to make it kind of easy to bring on newcomers just a little bit hopefully we'll see. Anyway, I always start off with the three main things. The first thing is the story behind the game. Uh, and in this one, it's you are creating the perfect suburban neighborhood, town, whatever it's called. And you let players know that the most important thing that you will ever do in this game is give your town a name. Then I go into how the game, uh, how you win the game, which is whoever has the most victory points by the end of the game. Now, usually I go into that third thing that I always go into, which is how the game ends, but I don't go into that just yet. First, I actually talk about the cards, right? So I have the cards all laid out with their special abilities paired up and everything, and I explain to them how the numbering works in this game, how it has to be in ascending order and you can't duplicate in the same street and all that sort of jazz. Um, and that's when I tell them that there are three ways to win this game. I mean, to end this game, sorry. <laughs> Three ways to end this game. Either somebody fills up their entire board, right, of uh, houses, or someone uh, was unable to place a number three times. Bad. I also let them know that there are also these three objective cards that we'll all be going for. And if anybody ever completes all three of them, the game is over. And then I also let them know that I'm going to explain how you can actually complete these objectives a little bit later. Now, the big thing I do with this game is, and this is a huge secret, I tell no one that is playing that I've done this, but I stack the deck. Okay, so this is how I do it. I have my three piles out, and I have it where just, uh, so it doesn't matter what number comes out, but I have it that um, you have your like little construction ability out, as well as the forest or park ability out and the pool ability. Okay, that is the first round and you can explain what each one does. And what's fantastic is this player aid is really good. I would say like, hey, all these things are on the player aid. Obviously, we're not seeing all of the special abilities just yet, but you can always reference them on this player aid. Really good stuff. This is also where you could tell them like, hey, also, by the way, if you really wanted to know and you really wanted to gamify this, um, you could see how many cards of each number there are in the deck right there on the player aid. Sweet. Anyway, so those are the first three that I start off with um, in terms of showing them the abilities. I don't tell them all the abilities straight off the bat. I just state those three abilities, how they work, and people get to work, okay, on their little sheet and you could get right into it get right into playing that's what I love doing as you know probably by now if you've watched any of these other videos I like getting people playing as quickly as possible then I go into and you could I I just picked out random ones it doesn't matter it has to be two of uh, the same that you've already had so I already show them how to do the construction site I've already showed them how to do the park site but now I have this new ability the fences and you explain to them how the fences work and then that's also when you get to explain how you actually complete each of these objectives as for objectives these are the ones that I pick so let me actually go with n1 first right so for n1 I just have the double fours that you need hopefully the light is I don't know if you're seeing it very well. But yeah, I have the double fours um, for N1. For N2, I have the three and the six there, okay? And then for N3, I have the two and the five there. I pick these because they're easy. There's not a whole lot going on. It's just two separate blocks that you have to do for each one, and they're all different number um, of estates or whatever it's called, like 
buildings within a block or something. That's that's usually how I describe it. Buildings within a block. So I find those to be the simplest to teach and understand in terms of what you have to do for your objectives. And you can let them know like if you're the first player to complete the objective, then this will get turned over. Uh, you'll get the, the big points. Everybody else who completes it will get the little points. Okay? So that's when I describe the objectives, when the fence comes out. Then once you've done that, so they've mastered now some of the stuff, you're gonna introduce another ability. So again, you could, it doesn't matter what the other two cards are, right? But they should be ones that you've already done, right? So I've got the park and now I've got the fence again, but I've now introduced the biz card. And you just let them know how that works, right? So you say like, hey, remember when I said you couldn't duplicate uh, numbers? Well, with this you can, but then you have to let them know like that could be worth negative points at the end of the game because you have to mark this off and all that stuff. Then I let a, a couple of rounds go by, like maybe two, maybe three rounds. It depends on the group that you're playing with. And that's when I introduce this estate card because I feel like this one is probably the most difficult to wrap your head around. Um, at least that's what I've found. Um, so this is the one where you start to explain it to them and I just say like, hey, remember with the fences and how we have like the, the blocks of two houses or three houses, whatever, you're in essentially increasing the value of those estates. Um, and that, you know, like, go ahead and explain it, right? Like you're marking off the top most empty square in each of them or whichever one you want, um, things like that. You might explain a little bit of strategy, like, hey, if you're going for a lot of like blocks of four, you might want to start marking off all those fours down there. That way it's worth more points at the end of the game. Also for this, I totally ignore this whole like advanced variant thing here. This It's like, why, why play with it? Um, at this point, if it's their first time playing, Let's see if they even like it. You know, let's see if they understand it. Um, and then we could go. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. You, you just start playing, going, and uh, continuing on, answering any questions as they come up. Um, and then at the end, you tally up the points, see who wins. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is, especially if I'm playing with very new players, as I'm going through it, um, which each card, I just remind players like, okay, so we have the 15 with the biz card, which allows me to duplicate any number, blah, 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 right? Uh, but again, I, I would let them reference this reference sheet that tells them exactly what they need to know. Anyway, that's pretty much it for Welcome To and how I teach it, especially to very new players to, to the gaming as a whole. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. If there's a certain way that you like to teach this game, I would love to know. Please let me know, again, down in the comments below. I will catch you next time. Have a good one. Mm.